For more resources, visit rym.org. One, two, one, two, three. The Local Youth Worker is a daily podcast that's centered on five questions each week. Ranging from the practical to the professional, we're looking for answers to the questions you're asking. Whether you're in full-time, part-time, or even volunteer youth ministry, this podcast is for you. Hey everybody, we are back uh, talking to Matthew Eichard. Um, We've talked about uh, decision-making, we've talked about dealing with disappointment. Um, Today, uh, dealing with a question... I don't. It might could step on some toes, um, but it's it's a helpful uh, question for us to wrestle with, and I'm sure many youth workers have have dealt with it. Um, but that, that's a question of having a student that comes up to you and says, "Look, I really like ministry. Um, I really like what what you do. I've wanted to do ministry. I've kind of had a heart for ministry, but my parents are really discouraging me from doing this." Um, you know, I want to go into ministry, but my parents don't, uh, sometimes it's, you know, financial reasons, um, uh, issues that can come up in the future, wh- wh- whatever it is, uh, but they're yeah. discouraging it. So what do you say to a student who is passionate about ministry, uh, but the parents are not? You know, as we get started on that question, John, it, it's, it's sort of interesting when I think back on my own life, because I think I was the exact opposite of, of this <laughs> question. My parents, without telling me, they very much thought that I would be going into vocational ministry. Oh, wow. I wanted nothing to do with that idea. <laughs> yeah. um, so, you know, God just providentially worked and I think created that that burden and, and reality in my life over time. But, you know, thankfully, when, when those decisions were made, my parents have been nothing but supportive, uh, really, from day one. Um, I, I think, too, as we get started, you have to recognize that ministry, a life of ministry, it does come with certain difficulties. Mm-hmm. Um, it does come with, with, with certain realities that just kind of set you apart from maybe the, the typical nine to five. And that's not in any way, shape or form, um, trying to minimize the trials and difficulties that come with non-ministry work, non-vocational sure. ministry work. Sure. It's just to say that you know, the the idea that, you know, for me, um, the best time for for conversation with with the people of our church is typically going to be when they are not at work or not at school. So from a scheduling standpoint, ministry is going to be really different um, from a relational standpoint. Ministry is, is very different. Um, you know, the, the people of your own local church, they view you in a pastoral role or a ministry position role. And that it just feels a, a little different day in and day out and each and every Sunday. Yeah. Um, and there are both benefits and, and difficulties to that. Um, and obviously, um, while my particular context has been very generous to support me and my wife very, uh, very well, um, you know, by and large, you're not going to have the earning potential that maybe some other fields would have over the <laughs> lifetime. Um, and so I, I think at, at one level, you know, you want to you want to help that student realize that from the moment they were conceived, their parents have wanted nothing but the best for them. Hmm. Um, their parents want to see them safe and happy and and fulfilled and productive. Um, and, and I think, you know, even, even parents who may initially, you know, not, not love the idea of ministry, they, they probably still very much for their children. Mm-hmm. Right? And I think in, in talking with a student, you would want to, to try to emphasize that, to, to recognize that, listen, this particular conversation may be difficult in the moment, but remember that your parents, in most contexts, or at least in many contexts, they do love you. Um, they want to support you. They are a wise voice that God has placed into your life. And you have both the responsibility and the opportunity to honor them well as you live underneath that support and that protection um, and that provision. 
as one of their children. Hmm. Um, I I think I would want to start there, John, because you want to diffuse any of the it's me versus my parents or my parents versus me mentality um, of just trying to, again, to to reconcile those feelings of estrangement or difficulty. Um, I think if you wanted to maybe get a little more practical with it, um, I, I don't know that you ever want to discourage uh, the burden on the part of any individual who is excited about the idea of vocational ministry. Um, I, I think we would recognize that that much of that would be God given and, and a mark of the Holy Spirit at work in someone's heart and life. Um, and so I, I would I would seek to really um, to to be excited about that burden with a student um, to even look for opportunities um, to to give that student experience in ministry roles, ministry, ministry, um, you know, service and all the while continuing the conversation with that student and recognizing that if you're sitting here at 15, 16 years old, let's say you came back from a missions opportunity that just changed your perspective on life or a summer camp opportunity that changed your perspective on life, you know, recognizing ministry burden is good. Honoring your parents is vitally important. And in reality, vocational ministry could still be quite a few years into your future. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, if I think about my own track, and I realize it's not going to be everyone's, um, I would tell you that I had some sort of burden toward vocational ministry, full-time ministry, when I was 16, 17 years old, it was probably the first time I hit on that idea. I went to a private Christian school. I had a teacher who you know, kind of said, Matthew, have you ever really recognized this about yourself, seen this giftedness in yourself and had some burdens just for you know other young people as they were seeking to live a, a, a Christian life? And, you know, that, that's when I was 16 and 17 years old. I wasn't actually ordained as a minister until I was 27. Hmm. That's that's 10 years later. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think we also have to recognize that you can, <laughs> you know, you can go into full time ministry from any number of different angles. You know, there's not one particular path. You know, in my particular denomination, obviously, you have to um, have a graduate degree from a seminary in order to be ordained. But on our church staff, apart from the pastors, there are other individuals who hold seminary degrees or who've only attended certain seminary classes or whose life experiences as just a a faithful believer have well prepared them for (laughs) their ministry role. And so, again, just just recognizing with a student, you have lots of time to recognize your giftedness, to continue this conversation with parents, to to maybe attend a class here or there to think about what college may hold for you um, before you actually kind of get to, I am fully committed to this idea of being an ordained minister or being a full-time missionary or, you know, giving my life for the gospel, you know, in this place. And those are good desires. Um, But there's time. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're saying a lot of good things. And I think you started off, um, in the right place, at least from my perspective of, of, you know, siding with the parents for sure. We, we want to, you know, support the parents, come alongside the parents in youth ministry. It's vitally important, um, to be, yeah, supporting the parents and to be on the same page with them. And so emphasizing the parents love uh, for their child. Um, obviously a, a child doesn't really fully grasp that. They, they do uh, yeah. grasp that to a degree, uh, but not to the degree that the parents actually love them. So trying to kind of help them see that perspective um, is, is huge. And then, like you said, to, to encourage that in your students, to celebrate that with them and to try to give them opportunities in the ministry um, is, is another uh, vital way in which they can test those gifts. And that just increases their discernment on, okay, is this where, where the Lord's calling me? So again, that, that's, that's great advice. And, and so kind of a, a follow-up, sure. Let, let's say you, 
you know, emphasize the parents' love for them, honoring the parents. Um, and then you, you do talk with a student and you kind of have some continued discussions, let's say over a couple of years, and they're actually helping volunteer and um, doing uh, aspects of the ministry. But they're all along talking to you saying, my parents are just continuing to discourage this. And um, mm-hmm. is there a point in which you think the youth worker should, uh, you know, have a meeting with the parents, talk to the parents? Um, what, what are your thoughts on that? I will say this is one of the, the the privileges that I maybe have as an ordained minister in our church that might be harder for a, a non-ordained youth worker. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think that, especially because I've been in my context for several years, it would be, I think, appropriate and somewhat natural you know, for me to approach parents to have that conversation, you know, to say, I love you guys so much and we have, you know, we've lived so much life together. I remember laughing with you guys when, you know, when Johnny was trying to play middle school basketball and couldn't get out of his own way. And, you know, I remember when we were out on the lake that day and, you know, so-and-so ate way too many cookies and, (laughs) you know, you've shared life together, right? Absolutely. And to say, I know that this has been a hard conversation for you and your family. And I, I recognize that, you know, from your perspective, there are, there are several significant hurdles here that you just don't want your child to have to clear or to, or to, to pass. And there, there are trials that you don't want your child to face, but you know, Mr. Smith, Mrs. Smith, it's clear that your child has significant giftedness for ministry. You know, here are maybe five, six, 10 things that I could talk to you and, and just give you evidence of that. Um, it's also clear that that your child has a burden that's not going anywhere in terms of, of vocational ministry. And I just want to encourage you guys to maybe, you know, partner with Billy or Susie and think about, you know, just committing this to prayer for the next three to six months together. Because, you know, these these are good burdens. These are kingdom burdens. Mm -hmm. And I realize, again, that these are not easy things to anticipate or necessarily look forward to for every family. But let's see what God might be up to here. Mm -hmm. Um, And again, you know, I think giving, you know, in, in that conversation, you know, not giving parents an ultimatum, which is never my place anyway, but but not to present it in a you're wrong, he or she is right, deal with it. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and to just say, let's take time. Let's, let's again, let's come together here. Let's, let's pray together. Let's think through these hard things together. Um, and, you know, let's think about maybe what the best pathway forward could be. Um, because I, I would say that I, I'm, I'm typically a fan. And again, there's different people with different, but if you think about college, I'm a fan of an individual maybe pursuing a degree that's not ministry related in college mm-hmm. um, just because there's opportunity for the cultivation of other gifts there. Mm-hmm. Um, there's the cultivation of perhaps desires that are not ministry related there. Um, and I had someone a long time ago who is much wiser than me and far more experienced than me tell me, <laughs> listen, if you can do anything other than vocational ministry, go do it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, you know, I, th- I think I would carry forward a conversation that way, John. Yeah, and I think you're, again, just giving a lot of good wisdom there. And um, and like you said, most likely, hopefully, and in most contexts, there's some comfort there because you've been living life together. And so you've got a relationship with these parents that, you know, wasn't just established last week. And so if you've got that kind of, you know, relational capital, that does make those conversations um, a lot more easily, easy and and you know, it could be the parents are able to give some perspective that you as a youth worker, you know, obviously oh, yeah. don't get to see because they see them, you know, behind closed doors uh, in their house all the time. And they might say, well, you know, here's some things I'm concerned about, and this is some reason why. And um, that can help give youth workers a perspective of, okay, wow, okay, that makes sense. Um, you know, I was only getting kind of one side of the story the whole time. So, um, again, all this just points to the importance of partnering with parents um, and that youth ministry isn't just ministry to students it's Mm -hmm. to a whole family so a lot of good stuff there matthew thank you you're welcome